Hello folks, I'm Tommy Jotzen from Amorphis. And I am Niklas, also from Amorphis. And you're watching Dark Scene. <laughs> might be slightly heavier if you are uh, listening to vocals but uh, it just came out that way we didn't have any plants or something like that the songs just came up that way and uh, if you ask me I'm really happy it's a little bit heavier because I'm a big fan of death metal music but um, we don't think so much when we are composing music we just uh, do the arranges and stuff like that and it just ended up that way yeah, I think since Eclipse there's been pretty progress, like Silent Waters was a bit more mellow, darker album, but other than that I think it continues, maybe a bit heavier. But I don't know anything about the future because we haven't uh, practiced new songs. I think we have some, some material or some ideas, but I don't know anything about forthcoming album. I think the guys are composing music at home and uh, they are doing some demos and then they send the demos to the other band members and uh, we are not doing anything when we are in tour. It's I think it's impossible to do or be creative when you are touring. Uh, just playing shows and uh, trying to survive of the days, I think it, it's enough when you are touring. Yeah, sometimes there's like bits and pieces you can come up on tour, but usually when everything happens when you are home. And I think lots of bands are uh, composing or uh, practicing new songs during the sound checks, but for us it's more like we just do really quick sound check and then we go, for example, for a walk or to see the city or something like that. We are lazy bastards. This, this guy Pekka Kainalainen, who we have worked with him li now like three or four years, and uh, he's uh, he's really interesting person. He's a uh, little bit older than we are. He's like 50 or something, and he's not at all heavy metal guy. He's more like a, a painter and art teacher, and. Uh, during this, uh, with this album, we had some ideas, and uh, we wanted to pick some stories from Kalevala again. And uh, Becca wanted to take this time uh, stories from from uh, this uh, main character from Kalevala book called Väinämöinen. So he wrote some stories about this guy and about uh, what happened in in his life and stuff like that and then we just put the lyrics and music together. It's a, it's a little big work because uh, he always does the lyrics in Finnish, so we have to translate it, the lyrics, and, and then we have to arrange the lyrics with the music, so it's, it's, it's a really big work, always. No, it's not a problem because uh, I can't do any lyrics. <laughs> I suck. I can do lyrics like 
uh, I love you, baby, and stuff like that. But that's all. Yeah, well, that's what's on your mind anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I think we have a really high quality with music, so it would be really stupid to spoil the music with shitty lyrics. So that's why we are, we want to cooperate with, with someone else. Usually the music comes first and then we present it to him and then he continues. Kalevala. Yes, Kalevala. I think it's uh, become more popular nowadays in Finland. Uh, maybe because of music, heavy metal music, because some of the Finnish bands are using Kalevala as an influence. Every kid has to learn a little bit about Kalevala in school. Of course it's really boring for the kids. And uh, but for us, it's more like an inspiration. It's not that we are like living Kalevala world every day. <laughs> it's just a good fit with with the music because we have lots of folkish elements in our music, and I think it's something really special and uh, some it's something really exotic for the fans. Something different. Yeah, and I think back in Finland, at least everybody can relate to it. No, I used to hate it in school, but then nowadays you make a living out of it. So. <laughs> importance on live shows nowadays and you know you cannot count on record sales anymore so you have to get a fan base and get people to come to the shows then it makes some sense but otherwise it would probably be pointless pretty much to make albums I think it's not a big problem for the bands I think it's a bigger problem for the labels and of course it's really important for a band to release album so if you release an album, you can make a tour. So without releasing anything, it's fucking stupid to <laughs> tour, you know. But uh, I think it's still really important to release good CDs. And uh, there, I think in heavy metal, in general, uh, people are really into bands, merchandise stuff, and uh, they want to have albums. And uh, lots of heavy metal people like to by vinyls, so I think we will release lots of albums in the future too. <laughs> yeah, and it's impossible to sign an MP3, so... But uh, of course, if you want to make a living out of music, you have to be really active, you know. We are touring a lot and uh, of, uh, for us, summertime, it's, it's really good because we have lots of festivals. And uh, in festivals, there's a, there are lots of people and they buy lots of merchandise, so summer, summers are always nice. Yeah, in Finland also get quite a lot of radio play, so... Yeah, in Finland they really play lots of heavy metal music in, in radio, so for us it's of course a good thing. people who sell ten times more than what we do, but I mean, nowadays I guess people know our name, so, but still it's not, you know, mind-blowing. Yeah, of course people know 
know the band in Finland and uh, it's always great to play in Finland because there's always lots of people coming to see us. Yeah, sometimes we get free drinks too. <laughs> Yeah, and we are not not the only only heavy metal band from Finland. There's lots of lots of bands coming, like Children of Bodom, Him, or Nightwish. So sometimes when you looked at the top ten chart, there was eight metal bands in it. Uh, you know, you, I don't think anywhere in the world it can be the same. Yeah, it's been like that, like maybe ten years. But if you are, if we go back in time, like fifteen or twenty years, that wasn't the case. No. It was really underground music. If you had long hair, you got beaten up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, I don't know. I think it will change in the future because there's maybe too too many bands now in Finland. But I think the quality in metal music uh, is is really good in Finland, and we have lots of interesting bands. So maybe that's one one reason why heavy metal is so famous in Finland. <laughs> Hard to say because uh, I've been in a band like now like six years, and I think we have gone forward yeah. all the time. So yeah, since then it's been a good experience. <laughs> of course, there's some highlights like playing in, in Wacken, for example. It's always great to play there. There's so many people there. But uh, yeah, for looking forward to this 70 ton of metal cruise the Caribbean cruise. We've been touring all winter, so it's gonna be nice. Yeah. And we had like three or four uh, Colden records in Finland. Yeah. Yeah, four. So that's always a nice thing, of course. It's not a goal, but if you get it, it, it feels nice, of course. And one song made it to a cool songbook. Yeah. <laughs> Once in the US where you got very sick and you don't really get treatment when you are a foreigner. And it's like you have to just do one week without no doctors, nothing. And then you like think about what's maybe it's not worth it. But you know, in the end found doctors and shit, but then we got treated like I don't know, like we came from another planet or something. <laughs> I think we all hate really early flights if you go uh, outside Finland we have really early flights and that's always it's really hard to wake up really early but you know only small things <laughs> I think the first one, Karajan Istmus, and the second one, Tales from the Thousand Lakes, they are really important and maybe Eclipse. And uh, Karajan Istmus was the first album that I heard when I was a teenager. And uh, uh, Tales from the Thousand Lake, Lakes, it was something completely different. And uh, I think it opened lots of new uh, ways and uh, the atmosphere on this album it's it's really unique 
and uh, Eclipse was the first album with me, so I was really scared what will happen in the future, but everything went really smooth and uh, all the old fans, they were really open-minded and gave me a chance to do my stuff, so after that I'm, it's, it's been more easier for me. Yeah, I think maybe Tales from the Thousand Lakes, of course, and then uh, Eclipse and probably Skyforger. I don't know, it surprised me the, how well it went. It was like, what the hell happened? Uh, the other two for the same reasons as here. some rumors about this cruise because I think it was last year it was the first time yeah. they made it and a couple of Finnish bands they played there and we heard that it, it's really some something completely different uh, 40 heavy metal bands playing in a cruise so that's so stupid ideas it has to work <laughs> And of course we also wanted to go there, but I don't know what's the reason why we are playing there, but we are really happy about it and it's it's gonna be awesome. You know, thinking heavy metal guys uh, playing uh, volleyball in, in a pool with the Hawaiian shirts and stuff like that and <laughs> uh, black metal band playing at the same time. So it's, yeah, it's really strange. It's opportunity to see Venom, I hope it's on the pool <laughs> stage. Actually we played in a uh, one cruise before it's it was in Finland maybe a year ago it's it's a little bit smaller but still it's really strange to play in, in a boat we have to play there two shows and I think we are playing two completely different sets so I think it's really interesting for the fans and a big challenge for us of course <laughs> At the moment, we are. Everybody is doing all, only amorphous. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I think we are in the best situation at the moment. We are touring, but, but but we are not touring too much. We have some of some of the members have family and kids and stuff like that, and uh, we don't want to make uh, too long tours. I think five weeks, it's enough. Mm. Then one week break and five weeks more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think this is not the job. I, I think this is more like lifestyle for us. And if we can get some money, that's always a good thing, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it changed during the years. Yeah, it depends. Sometimes there is a lot of chicks and sometimes there is no chicks. So, but I don't know, over the years I think we are more closer to maybe 40, 60 share, when it used to be maybe 5 to 95. Yeah, I think it depends if you go to see the Venom show. Mm -hmm. I think there's lots yeah. of guys or Manowar show. But then if you go to see Reckless Love show, then it's probably <laughs> one guy who is after the girls. Yeah, but uh, I like girls. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so let's hope in the future there will be more girls in the heavy metal business. Yeah, that's good.
yes. because girl and women they rule. Yeah, the front row. Yeah. Thank you. Dark scene. Dark scene, yeah. Okay. Hello, folks. This is Tommy Olsen from Amorphis. And I am Niklas, also from Amorphis. And you are watching Dark Side. No, it was a Dark Side. What was it? Dark scene. 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 The dark scene. Dark scene, all right.